My name is Deepti and I work as an um, art historian and uh, I'm also the founder director of AK Archiving which works as a museum advisory. We set up museums and work with jewellery collections across the country. I think my first memory of diamonds, I would have to admit little subconsciously, was my mother wearing the typical South Indian diamond earrings. But my first uh, um, uh, awe moment with the diamond was when I worked uh, in curating the Nizam's jewels and I had the chance to actually hold a 183 carat diamond in my hand and it just sort of came alive as to what really was the allure of a diamond. I think it started a, a lifelong uh, passion for looking at fine uh, gems and jewellery through my medium of work which is uh, photography. Um, whenever I study a vintage photograph, especially from Royal India, I'm, my eye is always searching out for the big diamonds. So regional differences are key in the work that I do because when I'm looking at thousands of photographs that are from 100 years ago, one of the first things that speaks to me is uh, how different types of jewellery are worn. So for example, gold is ubiquitous in uh, Kerala, it still is and uh, diamonds and uh, pole keys or flat cut diamonds were very popular in Rajasthan and almost all of North India. It still continues to be. So you also see the sort of continuity of uh, regional differences uh, carrying over or maybe 50, 100 years. In the research that I've been doing, diamonds and diamond stories have almost always sprung, on, sprung up on me without warning. When I was working on the photographs in Hyderabad, uh, dealing with uh, jewellery, Nizam of Hyderabad had one of the largest treasuries of the world and of course uh, including some of the most famed Golconda diamonds. I was looking at the photographs of the, uh, his queens and I noticed this uh, square pendant that rested on the, on the shoulders of most of the, his wives. And it was um, research asking around with some of the royal ladies uh, that led me to find out that this uh, jewel was actually called a choti taviz. It was literally a diamond uh, pendant, a talisman that was woven into the choti or the braid and it rested next to the heart for protection. So I think it's like really beautiful that you would have a protective talisman that was decorated with diamonds and would watch out for your well-being. Real means, uh, for me, I think I would go back to the Sanskrit word for diamond, which means Vajram. And in art history, Vajram stands for indestructibility. And to me, that defines a kind of a underlying um, ethos of what real and what diamonds really mean for me, about being indestructible, being eternal, and really filled with fire. I think uh, um, the, the relationship between uh, diamonds and eternity really comes from the uh, intrinsic nature of the stone and its physical properties. To be able to look at a real rare precious diamond that shines um, and uh, somehow is indestructible like I said earlier symbolizes what humans define as love. It is a uh, unending, everlasting feeling, uh, or at least as we perceive it. So I think there's good sort of synchronization between what a diamond symbolizes and what we think of our love to be. So yeah, for me, that's what counts.